I would say this, that the, considering the alternatives we faced, which was the uh, imminence of unit trusts that would have been promoted with heavy front-end commissions, with, with substantial annual fees, with bad ta tax consequences, and with probably a, a misrepresentation of the historical record in such a way that people who really didn't know much about securities would have been enticed in. With that as an alternative, I, I think the, be the B stock was the best thing we could have done, and, and I feel good about how it's worked out. I think that, you know, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't set out to issue it. We don't like talking anybody into buying our stock, but uh, I don't think in any way that uh, the group we have here is it, it diminished in the least by having a mix of B and A shareholders as opposed to uh, A only. The, the B, the B has worked out uh, as well as possible. I, I hope that it. You know, we haven't enticed anybody in with unreasonable expectations. That's the biggest thing that Charlie and I worry about. And it's hard not to have that happen with the historical record. I know it would have happened in a big way with the unit trust. So, uh, you know, it's like, it's like uh, making the mistake originally of starting with Berkshire. I think we enjoy things as they come along, and, and, and we've gotten a good group with the B shareholders, and, and we're happy with the present situation. Charlie? Yeah, we wanted to step hard on what we regarded as a disreputable financial scheme, and that we did. And and, then, and I think the way we sold the B was such as to not, as to as to attract the kind of people who really did look at it on a long-term basis. We we did everything we could to discourage people who thought they were going to make a lot of money in a hurry. So, we I think we attracted a whole new group of shareholders who were quite similar in perspective to the shareholder group that we already had, and that was our hope.